welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda, and today we have a guest. This guest is Heather from the Edmonton Modern Quilt Guild. We're guild sisters, and she's going to talk to us today about something that's happening in North America that is just amazing. It's called Kawandi. Now, without further ado, Heather, take this away. Let's see what you've got, what we've got. Hi, um, so this is Kawandi. So I'll just start by sharing my screen. I have uh, a little pre presentation here. Um, so here we go. I will just start this. Okay. Can you see everything uh, okay there, Brenda? Yes, I can. That is just okay. Nice. So beautiful. So this is a Kawandi. So Kawandi is a hand quilting technique, um, and it's by the African CD people of India. Um, so this picture is of one that came from India and you'll notice the geometric shapes on the corners. Um, it's bits and bobs of brightly colored used textiles. Um, and sometimes there's religious icons in them, but this is a good example of a Kawandi. And this is just part of a presentation that I did for our guild. It's beautiful. So you can see this lady. She's just um, carefully folding up this beautiful, large Kawandi. Um, you can see the stitching on the back is just beautiful. Um, it's a unique approach to quilting because it's assembled from the outside in. And it's basically um, a quilt as you go type process. So once you're done, you're done. There's no binding, there's no nothing in the end. Um, and it's a straight stitch by hand. And each row of stitching is all around the circumference and you're spiraling into the center and they're about a finger width apart. And um, it's different with other kind of hand stitching where your stitch length is pretty well the same front and back. And you can see on this beautiful quilt. Um, so it's part of the slow stitch movement. It was brought to North America by a few people out of the States. And uh, we'll talk about Margaret Fabrizio um, she's a forerunner in the Kawandi movement. So the slow stitching uh, kind of movement, it's free, it's relaxing, it's um, just a beautiful uh, way to sit and be. So this is uh, Wikipedia. I got this from um, a a retreat that I went to with the Canadian Quilt Guild Network and uh, it was an online retreat. And it talks about slow stitching. And I just love this. It says slow stitching is about using the needle and the thread in the same way you'd use a paintbrush. It's about creating art, about enjoying the process rather than worrying about the product. Basically, slow stitching is about taking a step back from the busy, chaotic world we live in. And it was a good um, kind of release from the last two years. I mean, we've, we've all found some interesting stuff. And uh, this is one thing that I discovered, um, and I just love it. And you can see this piece here is a little bit different. Um, and you, every piece is unique and beautiful in its own way. Um, so here's another picture of a lovely woman 
sitting on her Kawandi. Um, so the Kawandi was uh, br originally brought to India about 400 years ago. Um, sadly, these people were brought over by the Portuguese as slaves. And uh, so they live kind of in the forest. They're a remote um, kind of community. They're kind of on the bottom end of the caste system there. Um, so these are recycled garments. These are recycled uh, materials. They're used as uh, quilts on their beds um, and on their mattresses. Um, they're traditionally made from old saris, used fabrics, and the older women, we don't like to say, it, as soon as they're not able to be used in the fields of agriculture, then this is what they do on their porches. So remember when we have our good lighting and we have our beautiful needles and we have our little irons beside us, these people, um, have minimal tools and they create the most beautiful kawandis and so specifically they create them for the babies of course and that is just part of our dna it sounds very familiar yes. every time you hear of a baby being born you think oh i have a baby quilt somewhere <laughs> yeah <laughs> right? So it's the coveted uh, thing to do when a new baby comes along. So here is one of the people that uh, brought uh, Kwandi to North America. Her name is Margaret Fabrizio. And I really encourage you to look up her YouTube. She's fantastic. I mean, I, this picture doesn't have the greatest resolution. Um, but it, her hair is phenomenal. And I think in this picture, she's close to 90 years old. Um, she traveled, uh, to India in 2012. So she was in her eighties. Um, and she met the CD people there. Um, she was trying to figure out the quilts. She sat there, she watched them. She, she left India. She, um, prior to that, she went to all the tailor shops and begged for um, used fabrics, brought it back to North America, made a number of quilts, went back to India and had the CD people take a look at her work because she wasn't able to recreate it. And in the end, it's you'll never be able to recreate it because everyone is individual and it's all you creating it. So um, yeah, I, I really encourage you, take a look at her videos. She's a phenomenal person. She's a musician as well as an artist. She, uh, was the harpist chord player for the Grateful Dead. I mean, she it, she is quite fantastic. Um, she's 91, or going to be 91 this year. So yeah, yeah, Margaret Fabrizio. And uh, I have, uh, these are some of her, you see if I can get a little bit closer on this one. Yeah, you can see she has hair like mine in this one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so different technique. Um, and here's uh, one that we've seen before with the fulas on the corner. This one's a little bit different in the construction. Um, and then here's a pink one. And they're, uh, they're all just gorgeous in their own way. They're colorful. There's unexpected um, colors and patterns um, in all of them. So here are the different parts of the Kawandi. So the Tikeli, I could be pronouncing these incorrectly. Um, it's, it, 
you know, and some of the spelling could be different. Um, so the yeah. tekeli is each piece of fabric. So we start with in this demo, we kind of start with something that's manageable. And then you can go to just about anything. It's, you know, open to interpretation. It's open to anything. Um, the fula uh, is a floral decoration or a flower decoration at the corners. And it's just basically a square of fabric and you just kind of pinch it in. Um, and the piece is said to not be complete without it. And I said the word to my coworker today, as a matter of fact, I was showing him these CD quilts and he's from India. And he said, actually a fula, if you're doing the, the interpretation in India, it means more bud than flower. So bud, buds on the corners. He, he likened it to a rosebud. Um, yeah, so, and the tule, uh, these are pieces of fabric. So the technique is kind of folding into each other. And then uh, the tule is pieces of fabric. Uh, you'll find when you run into trouble or if you want to use a piece of fabric that you just love and you want to highlight it. And you, so you put it on top and then you stitch it in like a patch. Um, and it's, it's really helpful. It gets you out of trouble. You know, when you have those difficult areas, um, things aren't matching. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You know, there's a way out. And it's it's a it's a pretty good way out. Um, here's another kuandi, um, and it's much like mine. Every time I see this, I go, it looks like mine a lot. And the only way I can tell them apart just by glancing is is from the fulas on the corners. So basically, a kuandi is pieces of fabric uh, folded into each other. And uh, you can do this by finger pressing. You can use a, a roller. I, I have a roller like this. Um, this one I think was 11 or $12. Uh, you can purchase a wallpaper roller at a hardware store for $6. So if you just want to try it, um, try a, a wallpaper roller. Um, or you could have a small iron by your side. I have a little iron and a wall mat that I move around. Or you can just use your traditional iron and press the pieces. You'll get into a rhythm of which side has to be pressed over. And you can move through that that way. I um, I finger press all the time. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot yeah. For, and it's more efficient for me, but yeah. 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 So why not, right? That's what they do on the porch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, you can press the head two corners working right to left, uh, two sides and the bottom. Um, or the, when you're doing the toolies, you would press all four sides and make it, um, you know, press down uh, crisp corners is easiest. Right. So sorry, I'm not letting you get a word in it. No, I'm just jump in. I am just fascinated by this stuff. I, I just like, wow, I can hardly wait to get mine going. Let's put it that yeah. Way. No, it's exciting. So here's a uh, Kwandian action here. So the fabrics that you use, um, you can you can use old saris, and I'll just say I fell into a rabbit hole on the internet looking for old sari material. 
I think your best bet is to go to uh, use fabric or use Goodwill, Value Village, uh, some type of outlet like that and see if you can get an old sari, see if you can get old fabric or just look around. Every time I turn around, there's somebody throwing something out and it can be used. So I was at a guild meeting and they, they, they were cleaning out the cabinet. They had a bunch of aprons. So I took them and I cut them up and they're beautiful to work with because they're well used, older cotton and it's lovely. It's, it's almost like silk because oh, wow. it, it's just been used and it's, uh, it's wonderful to work with. So you can use anything. You can use silks, cottons, poly blends, you name it. When you're starting out, use two by four, three by five rectangles. And um, my, my thing is upcycling. I love upcycling. And this is at its best, um, even the batting. So you don't have to use, you can use new batting if you want, you can use new cotton if you want, You, but the beauty is in the used. Um, so you can use Franken batting, um, which I do all the time. So I just take batting that's similar and I just zigzag it together. So they call it Franken batting when you do that. Um, you can use a new piece of batting. Actually, I have a piece of print batting here. So here you go. All you have to do is just zigzag it together like that. Um, uh, you can use old t-shirt material that has a nice kind of drape on it. You can use, I uh, used an old sheet. Um, a heavier one, and that was a very nice drape. You can use flannel, cotton, just about anything. In my scarf, I used nothing. Yeah. Now, Heather, correct me if I'm wrong. You go, you sew around that first row first, and then you put your batting in? Or that's the easiest way. You use, right? Yeah. That's the easiest way is to get that first seam in place the most difficult seam and then from then on it's a cakewalk um so i say to have the batting at the same size like we're starting on this project 20 by 20 yeah um and you'll just cut like about half an inch all the way around and then just fit it in like a pocket and then just start sewing your second row. Hmm. Okay. All right. Does that make sense? Yep, that does. Yeah. Okay. So here's my quandi. Um, so I created this in the Canadian Quilt Guild Network. Um, give props to Dawn Piasta. She taught this course initially. Um, we were hand stitching. I had it done and complete and it's 20 by 20 um, by the end of the weekend. Oh, wow. So some people ask and um, yeah, so I'm not a fast stitcher. I'm not a slow stitcher. I'm kind of in between. I'm not speedy. Um, I'm kind of meditative, but I'm not the slowest either. It's only a finger width apart you're stitching, right? So you're going all the way around in into smaller but it's only the yeah. width. Oh wow. Okay. So there are there is a lot of stitching and so you'll find out what your what your personality uh stitching is. It's right. it's interesting to see. So you know you can see some people have small I have a larger hand. Yeah. When it comes yeah. my stitch length is longer. Yeah. Um, and this is totally natural. This 
this so picture you looks can like see the oh this picture looks like there's lots of beautiful texture on that hand piece you know, yes it's, it's the the movement of the stitches actually starts to gather it together and it would create lots of it looks beautiful heather it really does yeah uh, and uh yeah I, I have it right here so yeah it it just it feels good it would be like a really nice blanket um for the summer oh like it, it, if you wanted to go that size and remember you could piece these together as well like it could be a quilt within a quilt right yeah um there's endless possibility i'll just say when I, when i really start thinking and imagining where this will go there's a lot of places for it to go um so no quilt is complete without a label. So always have a label. And here you can see my stitching on the back. So the back is just an old piece of poly cotton. Um, yeah, and that's all it is. And my hulas. So these uh, corner pieces are not finished at all. Uh, and I chose a uh, batik. Um, so here's another project that I did. I loved, I loved this technique. I have a friend who travels a lot. So I made her a traveling scarf. So she can go out at night, bring her black dress and dress it up with the scarf. Wow. So, that is this beautiful. one, thank you. Um, <laughs> this is the fabric on the back is her colors. So I just went with that fabric. Anything in my stash, I, I picked out that would kind of go with this fabric. And remember, it doesn't really even go like some of it doesn't really even go, but it goes because it's stitched in. It finds a place. Um, when Margaret went to India, she would she would sit there and watch the women quilt and she would say, she would think to herself, well, what color are they gonna put in now? No, they would never put in pink. And then they would grab the pink piece and put it in. And she would be absolutely amazed at what they were doing. So yeah, this, uh, this scarf, my friend just loves it. Um, so it's about 64 inches long, eight inches wide. It took me a long time to stitch it. And I found with the scarf, because of the weight of all of the fabric, no batting. Oh, I didn't put any batting in it whatsoever. I just stitched and stitched. And it, with intention too, right. because it right. was for a close friend. So, and the little pieces of fabric, you, this little blue piece with the little white dogs, um, that's an ode to my little Casper. Oh, he's one, usually he's on the couch in behind me, but yeah, that's an ode to Casper for my friend. So yeah, and it has a label, little tiny label, um, but always put a label. So here's modern applications. So you think you'll never see it. While I was last October, when I was in the retreat, who comes on John Legend with his Gwandi inspired jacket? So you can see all the stitching in there. It's absolutely wow. fantastic. Cool. Not, you know, the buttonholes. Um, it's a beautiful jacket, Saks Fifth Avenue, $1,500 <laughs> is what it's. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, okay. That's a lot of money. Yeah, that is a lot of money for a shirt. Or a jacket. 
Oh. Yeah. So here's a close up on the scarf. You'll notice that I used, I, I got a whole bunch. We have a grandmother's sale here in Edmonton um, that I hope revives itself. But uh, I was there a few years ago and I got a whole bunch of pearl mm -hmm. cotton variegated. And that's what I used on this scarf. And I think it adds another element. It just seemed to take on the color of the fabric in behind it. It's kind of interesting. Um, so like I say, uh, on the fabrics uh, for this project, I don't know what Brenda's going to do. I think she's going to do something a little bit different or more exciting. But we started with the 20 by 20 piece. We, we folded it up all the way around. We had our fabrics all cut into re rectangles. Don't worry about matching. Don't worry about color wheels. You can play with that later. Let your first one kind of just flow. And whatever happens, happens. It's an amazing kind of experience. And as well, you're batting. So a 20 by 20 piece, and you'll trim that about a half an inch. So Kuandi tools, these are my tools that I use. Um, so Brenda uh, created some conditioner, thread conditioner. <laughs> I use that. Okay. Um, okay. So that's in the container there. Um, and I think it helps. So it helps tame the fibers. It helps strengthen the thread. I always have a a thimble handy. Always have two good working needles. That's for when you drop one and can't find it. Um, we're using Milner or straw needles in this project. And they're about two inches long. Oh, I did have some here. I don't. Um, two inches long and uh, the Milner needles are the same width from tip to eye. And so they're easier to push through fabric. Other people um, have different ideas. Uh, your best bet if you went into a store or looking on Amazon is to try Milner or straw. I don't think they use straw, but Milner needles. And they're cheap enough. Um, so the thread I used, this is a 12 weight pearlized cotton. Uh, if you have some embroidery thread, as long as it's not that old and you can tell how old it is. Um, I don't know, Brenda, if you've done this, but just by pulling it and seeing how easily it breaks. Yep. If it breaks easily, don't use it because it will break in your fabric. And you can always find embroidery thread at Goodwill or Value Village. I know that for a fact. And uh, if not, it's quite uh, reasonably priced. Uh, I think even Michaels has it now. I think yeah, they have some, uh, very DK. Yeah, someone told me embroidery thread has a 20 year life. Yeah. So, and some of it's been around for 20 years. <laughs> like, oh, and that's the problem, right? A lot of people don't realize it doesn't take much once it's dry rot. It just, you know, like you don't even pull hard and it falls apart on you. Yeah. 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 So if you're using uh, skeins, about three strands would yeah. be. Um, or even if you have some, some quilting thread, uh, you know, that's in good shape, you could use that as well. Um, so yeah, I have the needles in here repeated twice, just, <laughs> just because. Um, so here's the Kuwandi construction that we did. Uh, so you'll see, I don't waste fabric. So I even use the salvage edge. This is a, a new scarf that I started. Um, so you fold down the corners, 
uh, you create a sharp corner. Um, when you're folding them into each other, press them again. So if you're hand pressing, press them into each other so that all of the edges are crisp. And I have another view of different fabric of this. So here's with larger seams, so you can see it a little bit better. So on the left hand side, right here, this is my base fabric. This is my first piece is the white. So I've already folded up. You can see my seams are quite wide. Folded them, them up, so my first piece I'm going to open them up. I'm going to lay the white piece on top of the burgundy. And then I'm going to fold this side in first. And then I'm going to fold left to right to create a nice little edge. And you'll see in this last um, picture here how nice that is, that little pocket that you've created and that's where you'll start stitching so make sure you get close enough to the edge here to just keep that all in tight because you are creating basically the binding and everything with your first stitch so you'll start with um i start with a quilter's knot where I have the needle opposite to the end of my thread, wrap it two times, pull it through, and then I have a perfect knot. And I tuck that inside here. And then I bring it out right on the corner. And then I have a perfect start. And then I bury my end once um, I I don't know how much hand stitching you're doing on this channel, but I use like the length of my arm and uh, then when I'm done, I always, I don't know, I had a home act teacher that always told me, uh, bury it three times and then you're good. It'll never come undone, Heather. <laughs> she, she told me, Mrs. Temptation. <laughs> so there we go. From the tip of their finger to the elbow, like yeah, not so that, double. That's Double, but you're only using, you know, but you're, but you're, it's never longer than this because otherwise you don't get that tailor motion as you're sewing. Yeah. 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 So, well, you know more than me. I'm, I'm self taught, except for a little bit of home ec and clothing textiles. So, so here we go. Uh, second piece. Uh, so, I'm just showing here that you can use so this is a quilt um, i'm actually working on finishing this right now and this is a piece out of it and it was already sewn together and i thought well that could be interesting in a kuandi the two fabrics already sewn together i'm not going to do anything fancy so here's my second piece i have this edge already ironed. I have the bottom edge ironed. Remember, these are for examples only. So this, the seam allowance is way too big. Um, but I lay that underneath this first piece, uh, tucking this in, and then I fold it up. And when I'm stitching, I'll make sure I catch the very edge. So I will adjust the cadence of my stitching to make sure I tuck that in and it's strong because this seam is always open except for your stitching. And it's amazing to me, but it works. It's fantastic. So how normally, how much would you like finger press or iron under? I know this was for demo only, but how much, what's your seam? Is it a quarter inch? Is it? Well, like it's about a quarter inch. That's what I was doing. Yeah. Quarter inch. Yeah. I have, I have some samples here. So yeah, maybe a little bit more than a quarter. Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, all right. So there's my finger for, yeah. So, and um, yeah, in this last photo, I'm showing with my uh, well-used steam ripper <laughs> jack exactly where that stitching will have to come in. And I know there's a seam there, but I'll go bump, 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 and then I'll make sure I catch it right there. Um, okay. To me, it's critically important because then that seam is held. Right. It's held in there. Um, so you'll see these are examples of the stitching on the scarf. So this is where I'm coming in. I usually load up three stitches, four stitches, and continue on. Um, that's just me, whatever feels good. So in one of my um, presentations of this, the left-handers came up. So I'm going to plead ambidextrous here. So I, I am not a true right-hander. So I may be going the wrong way. I don't know. I, um, so if this doesn't work for you, your first piece will be going in the opposite side and go to the right instead of the left. So whatever feels good. So if you're left-handed, I'll just make this larger here, then go in this direction, go the opposite way around the fabric. Yeah. And whatever feels good for you. So this piece would be over here and you would be folding down and pressing this side instead of that side. Yeah, because most people when they're right-handed, they go from their right, they stitch from their right to their left. If you're left-handed, you go from your left to your right. Yeah, so okay. you just want the fabric laying out the correct way if you're left-handed, that's right, yeah. Very cool. So, yeah, so Here's how it, how it works. So once you get started, so you'll have your first layer of fabric. So you'll have it, um, I have, I don't know. So you'll have your first layer of fabric around. And like I said, you'll tuck that so here's your first layer of fabric. So then you'll tuck your batting into it. So it's like a pocket. You'll, because it's about the same size, so you'll trim your batting. This is a sheet, just an old sheet that I picked up at Goodwill and I did a whole quilt and this was the leftovers. So this is just something that I created um put the batting in it and then start your second row so then you're stitching along and stitching along and um you'll run out of fabric in one area because these are varied in length so then you'll add another piece of fabric in and stitch along the bottom edge of that one so you always want to make sure when you introduce a new piece, you're stitching along the fabric. So when they um, introduce, for example, this purple piece, the stitching is really close on the edge for the first row. Once you're within the fabric, the, the, the length you'll see kind of changes because um, you're not so worried. But always make sure that first row is in tight. Um, and once you get close to the middle, you'll see you just keep on adding fabric and it's exciting as you get closer to the middle because you start to move really fast and 
the thing that's most exciting is you don't know what it looks like until you're done. So you start to see it come alive. And then in the end, if you have problems, you can always do that patch piece on top. If, if it's not, you, you go, there's no way I can pull these ends in. It will not work. Do a patch. Be easy on yourself. This is meant to be fun. Yeah. So is there another way? Of course. I love my machine. Everybody loves their machine. So I thought, well, why don't I just try it <laughs> on my machine? And zip, I had a I had a machine done Kawandi in half an hour. Well, maybe not. Yeah. Just a, a minimal amount of time. But it was fun. It's not the same, uh, sort of the same process, though. I just went around the edge, introduced fabrics the same way, and then just so, so, so. So you can see on the back here, it's just sewing and sewing and sewing and sewing towards the middle. And now, that's did you all use your walking foot to when you were doing your Kawandi or? Well, I'll just say I have a faff, so I have IG. So it's not a walking foot, but it kind of does the same. The, the principle is the same, sort of. So you would suggest people use a walking foot, though, if they don't have a built-in walking foot, right? Most likely, yeah. 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 I would try make sure you do a hand one though even if it's really small just try it because it's so beautiful it well, really is to tell you the truth there's a little table and it a 20 by 20 is too big but there's a table between my husband and myself we just have this woven mat that has obviously seen better days and it's starting to show its age and i was thinking i would replace it with a quantity but how much shrinkage happens in a small piece like when you when you quilt a big piece, it shrinks in, right? So would we allow an extra inch on all four sides, or it depends on your fabric. It's totally, yeah. yeah. It's it, just try it, try yeah. it, yeah. I'm I'm have, just anxiously waiting to try it. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> just have fun with it. That's all I can say is is yeah it, it's a wonderful thing to do while you're you know what while you're waiting yeah it's portable project it's really portable all you need i have a little tiny purse and all i need is thread and needle a few pieces of fabric and my and i put my kwangi in my pocket yeah it, you know, if you're waiting, watching TV, listening to music, listening to books, you know, watch, you know, depends on what I was going to say, watching your kid's soccer game. And then I went, well, that's maybe you should be watching soccer. I don't know. <laughs> Look, people forget that our grandmothers and great grandmothers quilted with so little, you know, the, the things that we think oh we have to have now but they really quilted with just bare minimal tools and these ladies the you know the seedy people i mean just they make beautiful things with even less i know and the low light like when you think of our ancestors in the dark remember dark at five o'clock and they were quilting by candlelight and we're, here we are with our big, expensive stuff. I need more light. I need a magnifying light. <laughs> I need, you know, I need a needle threader. I can't see the eye of this needle. <laughs> yeah, that's why my grandmother had grandchildren. We all, we're all there, our chore. Thread 20 needles, at least 20. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. It was something for us to do. and. If I was the only grandchild around, I'd have to thread them all. It was fine. And you just thread them on a spool. 
like you you thread you know all 40 needles onto a spool and you know and then she just takes off what she needs oh that's a good idea you that's know? a good idea yeah yeah you know what i did a matey uh beating class and that's what she said she said load up a whole bunch of needles so you're not so you don't get stalled by the tools yes so that your your flow is not interrupted by um especially with you know some some of the the beads she was like load them up load keep a whole bunch loaded and yeah it was a fun course hmm. yeah so one of my first memories is of tying quilts on the farm in yeah. low light, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, so the, the beer table. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the last thing I have to share um, is this wonderful woman. Her name is Adrian. It's um, yeah, yoga with Adrian, and she's quite famous on YouTube and. Uh, she does uh, pay, pay what you think uh, options. She has YouTube. This is one. The link is here, or I think Brenda's going to provide you with the link. Um, this is phenomenal. You will see, feel the release in your hand as soon as you do this. If you do a lot of stitching, and especially people that are out of practice um this is a great video or it just if you do stitching or even if you do a lot of sewing or quilting or whatever it is take the 11 minutes she's phenomenal her dog benji is a little bit out of this out of the uh scene there but he he's fun and he just lays there and he's the yoga dog. Um, so yeah, I, I just trust me on this uh, yoga with Adrian. She's great life changer. Um, so Kawandi is like yoga. Um, it's kind of meditative and uh, it's very peaceful and very relaxing. So I really hope you try it. Yeah. Well, I was telling my hand piecing the students, right? You know, take three small stitches, breathing in as deeply as you can. And as you're pulling your thread through the work, breathe out as long and slow, you know, and it becomes very calming, you know. Yeah. The whole process I'm of hand piecing, you know, some little thing, you know. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited here. to try this. I really am. <laughs> I'm excited to share this with my the viewers here on YouTube. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, I I enjoy sharing it because I fell in love with it. And uh, yeah, it's phenomenal what they're doing. So I can't wait um, to try something more. My first thing is I'm making a scarf for myself. So this is the background. It's kind of Mandela's. Oh, very cool. Um, so that's the, the next piece that I'm doing. And then as I discover more, um, I'm going to try different things. So yeah, maybe oh. back with different techniques as I discover them. Because it is kind of a, a hidden art. Uh, these people live in forests. And uh, yeah, so somebody like Margaret had to go over there and, and find it. But, yeah, and it uh, probably yeah. wouldn't be the, you know, the easy, you know, sidewalk, you know, walk to, you know, trek into the forest for an 80 year old. She said she's 90 now. She was 80 when she went. Yeah, 82 or 83. Wow. Yeah. I was and, watching uh, the last video, and I, you guys, if my, to my viewers, I'll put a link to her channel as well. Some of her stuff is just gorgeous. She's 92 now, 
and that was her latest video and it's all about color and fun and breathing and it just yeah it's wonderful creative time with her it's just amazing yeah yeah it's you know uh, uh there was there is video she didn't do a lot during covid um, which is kind of sad, um, but it's a reality, right? So take what you can, take her in. She is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So another way to use your scraps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another, and I'm doing a series right now on crumbs and string, and I've got, I'm going to show you this. I've got one box of crumbs waiting for and another box of blue crumbs I have a plan and it's got to do with a kawandi so yeah oh does it oh with that fabric in behind you there yep perhaps it. <laughs> and my, we're actually filming this right now it's March 22nd so this is not an outdoor stitch on the porch project in Edmonton it's no because still it, there's snow on the ground the lawn is starting to peek through occasionally in our front but it's pretty still pretty cold out there so by the time this airs this will be April and you know we'll be well on my way to showing you this surprise but people are already asking what's the surprise <laughs> no it's exciting I can't wait to see it yeah um, exciting so yeah. yeah anyways i would like to bid all of you adieu it has been a wonderful time spending this with heather i just can't believe how overjoyed i am that she even agreed to do this because she did a <laughs> wonderful job and i was just like i need to ask her if she would come on to my youtube channel and do this and she agreed so i was very very pleased so without further ado I want to thank you and hope you have a wonderful, fabulous week ahead and have all sorts of creative ideas and enjoy your time. Okay. Bye, everybody. Heather, say goodbye. <laughs> okay, thank bye. you. Bye. Happy Kwandi. <laughs> thank you for watching our video today. We are just overjoyed with how our channel has grown. And um, we would like you to share, like, and subscribe these videos with your friends and other other people. Uh, this is one of the quilts that we might are considering at, at this time to do a sew along for. It is um, a crazy original scrappy design that was made with too much co coffee and too many granola bars. And it's a lot of fun to do. And it, it is a really good scrap buster. So share, like, subscribe, tell your friends about us. Uh, our plan for 2022 is two different sew alongs for sure and two different case studies. And we're going to do uh, try and do a thing on uh, grouping on uh, strings and crumbs and then another one on curves. So we've got rather an ambitious 2022 planned for you here. So like I say, I hope you come back. Have a great week ahead and we'll talk to you later. Bye.